All my favorite people are getting amazing hit pieces written about them lately, notably by this character Jared Holtz over at something called Right Wing Watch, who originally wrote this piece on how white supremacy has figured out how to become YouTube famous, lumping in the likes of Roaming Millennial, Styx, and Sargon for enabling the hate. The silliness of assigning a white supremacist label to people whose only crime is not disavowing enough for your liking aside, I love this premise that these people just figured out out how to become YouTube famous, like it's some kind of 90s PlayStation cheat code. The only thing these YouTubers figured out is how to make compelling arguments people like to listen to, earning large audiences over time. And if it's so easy to figure out, Jared, why don't you crack the code and build an overnight illegitimate audience for yourself? And this week he doubled down writing a piece on how Sargon revealed his alt-right sympathies committing the crime of entertaining wrong think without sufficient bookends of disavowal. But how can he be revealing his alt-right sympathies now if back in October you were writing he had already expressed his fascination with the ideology and been chummy with the movement's major figures? If you wrote about his sympathies then, what is he revealing now? Were you wrong then or are you wrong now, Jared? I consider it a high honor to be despised by the worst people and to be smeared rather than debated, because it shows that critic can't beat you on the ideas. These hit pieces are just tacit concessions that say, hey, I don't like your ideas, but I can't beat them, so I'm just going to call you names and hope that they stick. A hit piece is a badge of intellectual honor not a mark of shame. So for me, watching my friends and colleagues get decorated with such recognition, without so much as a peep about yours truly, has been a bit of an emotional mixed bag. I'm very happy for their accomplishments and their increasing notoriety and prestige, but I also feel a bit left out. Like I gotta up my game and earn this honor for myself, but the trouble is, I just don't know how. What do I gotta do? Not disavow Hitler enough? I'm not, not, not disavowing him. How many Pepes do I gotta post, Jared? Just tell me how many and I'll do it. But I am doing something right, cause I at least got him to tell me to lay off the soy on Twitter. That's right, I got called a soy boy by this creature from the Estrogen Lagoon. So feather meat cap, I will forever be the little channel that could. Formidable as it may be, Jared's work is actually not my favorite hit piece of late, However, that honor belongs to an author whose work found its way to my Twitter mentions this week. Tabitha Suthi at Maclean's in Canada, who published this piece provocatively titled, Is Jordan Peterson the Stupid Man's Smart Person? Huh. Well, I'm not sure what a smart person's smart person is, but presumably Tabitha is one, so let's read on to find out. University of Toronto psychology professor Jordan Peterson was in the news this week, and one imagines this makes the university sad. Peterson first made news and became a bell of the alt-right, when in September 2016 he announced that he would not use a student's preferred pronoun if he were asked to, except that he might if he felt the request was genuine, and no one had asked him that anyway. So he became a bell of the alt-right by taking a stance against compelled speech. If Congress passes a tax cut and some neo-Nazis happen to like it, does that make Congress the bell of the skinheads? I would think a smart person, smart person would be smart enough to realize that agreement on one thing does not imply agreement on all things. But forgive me, I'm just one of the stupid ones. To be clear, Jordan Peterson is not a neo-Nazi, but there's a reason he's as popular as he is on the alt-right. You'll never hear him use the phrase, we must secure a future for our white children. What you will hear him say is that while there does appear to be a causal relationship between empowering women and economic growth, we have to consider whether this is good for society because the birth rate is plummeting. He doesn't call for a white ethno state, but he does retweet data daily caller articles with opening lines like, yet again, an American city is being torn apart by black rioters. He has dedicated two and a half hour long YouTube videos to identity politics and the Marxist lie of white privilege. He doesn't say he wants to secure a future for white children, but he has implied he'd like a future for children generally. He hasn't called for the forcible expulsion of black people, but he has expressed disapproval of destructive behaviors. He hasn't explicitly espoused racist ideas, but he has dabbled in anti-racist ones. 
okay, enough of this crap. How can you, in one sentence, accuse someone of being a closeted, identitarian, ethno-nationalist, and then in literally the next sentence, rip him for criticizing identity politics? But fine, you conceded, he's not a Nazi. But he is something that's almost as bad. He's a capitalist, and worse yet, He's a successful capitalist. He currently has legions of fans hanging on his every YouTubed word. He's now hauling in around 50,000 US dollars a month through crowdfunding. As far as I can tell, Jordy, and not the cool Jordy from Star Trek either. Oh man, you sure got him. I bet he doesn't like being called something other than his preferred name. That'll make him rethink his stance on compelled speech. As lame as this article is, I have no doubt that Jordy still supports your right to write it, calling him whatever dumb name you want. Jordy rewards the devotion of his Patreon patsies with regular rants against political correctness and relationship advice I can only call Angry Oprah Says. For $29.99, Petersonites can get access to the self-authoring suite, a $119.92 value. Those looking for further opportunities to give him money can pay $9.99 for 100 question phrases, which which can be found along with similar question sets elsewhere on the web so that they might learn how your personality compares to 10,000 others. Pro tip, just take a personality test from the back of an issue of Glamour. You'll only be out about five bucks and you might find a free perfume sample. Pro tip, the market has decided that Jordan Peterson's philosophy is worth more and so people pay for it voluntarily. Pro tip, both the work of Jordan Peterson and Glamour magazine earn significantly more than your drivel, so perhaps Perhaps both of them should give you pro tips, not the other way around. Pro tip, the value of another person's work isn't determined by your subjective taste, Tabitha. That value is determined by what the market is willing to pay for it. Her writing makes it sound like Peterson's supporters are being defrauded rather than participating in a transaction willingly. Is there evidence of deception? Is there evidence of fraud? Is there evidence of anyone who feels ripped off? If not, this is only evidence of some someone else producing work that is in much higher demand than yours, Tabitha. So what else you got? Peterson's videos go on and on. It's like opening up a tab for one of those bird's nest webcams at the height of its popularity. Lots of people are watching, you feel like you should too, but nothing is happening. You keep checking back, the viewer numbers have risen, but the scene is just so gray and drab. You can make out a white object on your screen that may or may not be cracking up, but as time goes on you start to think, this thing was not incubated properly. Watching his videos, it's easy to conclude that Dr. Jordan Eggman exhibits the first documented case of the male cry voice. Yeah, what's next? His favorite color is red when blue is clearly superior? He buys vanilla ice cream even when chocolate is on sale? This is subjective taste and nobody cares about subjective taste. I doubt even you do. Are you telling me if Peterson's presentation style was different or if his voice was deeper that your complaints would just disappear? We both know they wouldn't. I read through this article a few times trying to find the argument that the author thinks Peterson is is wrong about, but it's never clearly explained. It just closes hitting hard on the key points that none of us are supposed to forget. Jordan Peterson is a racist and a sexist. What he's telling you is that certain people, most of them women and minorities, are trying to destroy not only our freedom to spite non-binary university students for kicks, but all of Western civilization and the idea of objective truth itself. He's telling you that when someone tells you racism is still a problem and that something should be done about it, they are, at best, a dupe, and at worst, part of a Marxist conspiracy to destroy your way of life. He's criticizing ideas he believes to be wrong, and yes, sometimes those ideas are held by women and minorities, but he'll criticize those ideas just the same when they exist in the head of a deplorable cishet white male like yours truly. And besides, is your position that women and minorities should be immune from intellectual challenge? If so, aren't you the one arguing for different treatment of people based on race and gender? For a piece constructed upon the 
premise of alleged intellectual superiority, there is nothing of intellectual substance within. The closest she comes is saying that Peterson's worries about cultural Marxism are exaggerated and that it's not an existential threat to Western society. And that's fine, but at that point you're just saying he's misjudging the scale of a problem. You're not explaining why he's wrong in diagnosing a problem itself. And worse still, it's just self-defeating reasoning. You spent much of this article linking Peterson to the alt-right or neo-Nazis or racists. If you were to ask me what's wrong with the alt-right, or neo-Nazis or racists, and my response was, well, it doesn't really matter because they're not an existential threat, I suspect you'd be dissatisfied with my inability or unwillingness to confront the idea itself. That's the same dissatisfaction any person of reason has with your condescending and intellectually cowardly approach. This entire piece is nothing but playground insults dressed up with faux intellectualism. It serves as nothing but acknowledgement that Jordan Peterson's ideas are compelling that you offer no alternative to them, and that you are enraged that people are literally buying them. You tried to put a chink in his armor, but succeeded only in polishing another trophy for his expanding trophy case. So please, if you have to keep writing embittered rants about how everyone who disagrees with you is just stupid, I ask only this, do me next. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay.